it is the second most celebrated holiday after Christmas. It's taking place on Tuesday. And I'm sad to say that uh, guess who is the most vulnerable? Your children. Let's talk about it. We, we, you have a lot, of, a lot of Christians oftentimes who just tag along with celebrating things that they don't even know what is the origin thereof. It is said it's about 15 billion is spent every year on Halloween. 15 billion. And it is said about 4 million of that it is spent now on buying clothes for your pets. Celebrating Halloween. You know the most popular one is the black cats. Because if you do not know you just go along with it. So let me just give you very quickly before we take on communion. It's not my sermon this morning, but I think it's important that I think you get this. Let me, let me lay a foundation for you very, very quickly. About seven reasons why you should not celebrate Halloween. You are ready for me? Very important, and it's very, very important for us to understand. And now, Romans chapter 11 and verse 16. Here's what the Bible says. Romans chapter 11 and verse 16. You can... Uh, Put it up there in Ongefi if you can. Chapters 11 and verse 16. Uh, the book of Romans. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The whole idea that I'm trying to do right now is a quick run. So I want you to understand that the holiday of Halloween means a lot more than just candy and costumes and festivities. Yeah. It's important that you get that. The founder, actually, of the Satanic Bible and uh, the founder of the church of Satan. Here's what he said. Quote, I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. This is the founder of the satanic church and the founder and the author of the satanic Bible. I quote, I am glad Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the air. So it's important that you and I understand that knowledge is power. If you're a Christian, it's important for you to understand that uh, the values of Halloween are in complete opposition to that of the Christian faith. Yeah. Halloween promotes darkness. It promotes death. It promotes fear. And you know that the Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22, God, in, in God there's no darkness at all. And I believe for you and I as representatives of him, we need to abstain from every form of evil. Chapter 11, verse 16, you got that? Of the book of Romans, did you get it? Chapter 11 and verse 16. I want us to see it, all of us together. Let's read all of us together, one, two, go. For if the first fruit is holy, the lamp... And if the root, let's repeat it again together. One to go. For if, what is Paul saying? Paul is wanting you to understand that the origin of a thing is important. Because if you celebrate something and you don't know where it started, you're going to have a problem. And I already can tell that those probably that are more knowledgeable in these things will be asking you that so is the Easter holiday that we celebrate as Christian. And I'm going to be quickly to say to you, yes, you are right. Easter did not start as a pagan, as, did not start as a Christian holiday. They're worshipping Easter, which is something else different, a paganistic God. Same thing when people talk about the Christmas and you understand about the winter solstice and stuff like that, that it not become primarily as a Christian holiday as it is, but it doesn't deny the fact that Jesus Christ was born. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that whether you want to put the date in January, you want to put it in May, or whatever you want to put it, it is not about the day. It is about the truth that Jesus Christ was born. Yeah. Correct? So it's important that you, therefore you understand now with me. I'm going to go through this with you very, very quickly. Number one, the origin of Halloween is pagan. It is a pagan holiday. And it goes all the way back. In order for you to understand it, you need to understand the way before the Celtics started celebrating it. It was being celebrated by a group of people in that culture that were called the Sam. It is spelled Samhain, which is S-A-M-H-A-I-N. But it's called Sowins. 
These are the people that started originally to celebrate. They'll put a bone of fire in between, and then they would celebrate by making sure that all the sacrifice that they were making on that bonfire, and in that, in that, in that time or period, there was a lot of bloodshed that would take place. And it's important for you to understand because it is now proven statistically that there are 40% of deaths that take place happen around this time. Knowledge is power. And I wanted to understand that for you and I as God's people, when we understand why we do certain things and why we follow certain things, it will help us. So here's reason number one. We do not celebrate uh, Halloween as God's people because the origin thereof, it is paganistic. And the Celtics, when they were doing this there, following their tradition, was they believed between the 31st of October and the 1st of November, they believed there was a curtain that divides between what is seen, which is the visible world, the physical realm, and the second realm, which is where the headquarters of the enemy is, or the demonic realm. They believe between the 31st of October and the 1st of November, there was a thin layer that was there. So the spirit of the dead would come in and visit the living. So therefore, in order for them to uh, try and combat what was evil for their lives, they then devise that it is good for us to dress like the spirits. And that is why you see there's an introduction of those costumes where others dress like skeletons, others introduce in the grave, and others are uh, um, making art out of the pumpkins, and they come out spooky. It is more than just candy and costumes and festivities. It is celebrating what was happening in that time as the Halloween, uh, the Celtics were celebrating it. So I wanted to understand if you're getting this right now, I wanted to understand that the origin of this is paganistic. It is not uh, something that you and I stand for. And I say to you that so is Christmas, so is Easter, so is Sunday. Sunday, it is actually the worship and way before that there is something that they did that I believe was very very important for you and I to understand the, uh, first century Christians redeemed some of these holidays that were paganistic and that's how we started serving God and uh, uh, celebrating some of those holidays that are very very important for us so I wanted to understand that Halloween number two it is very significant for those that are involved in witchcraft I quoted for you right now what the founder and the father of the satanic church what he said that I am so glad that the Christian parents at least once in a year they allow their children to celebrate that paganistic holiday in that sense because many of them that don't seem to be understanding where it's coming from. So Halloween is significant for those that are involved in witchcraft and the weekends they enjoy that when you and I are not understanding what God is doing even in our lives. But what we have done over the period of time you'll find out holidays like Easter which again was a paganistic holiday, we redeemed that. And we celebrate, therefore, what we now know to, know, uh, to, to be called the death uh, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and we also know that Sunday has been redeemed by the Christian community. That is why you see that is now a tradition when we gather on a Sunday like this. It's important that you understand that we are redeeming these days to use them for the kingdom of God. So Christmas, Easter, and Sunday were able to be redeemed by the Christian community. One day they have not managed to redeem was Halloween. And because they've not been able to redeem Halloween, you know, there is a day that which they had in July that was called the All Saints or the All Hallow Saints. But even then, Christians have not been able to redeem this day of Halloween. So for you and I, well, my idea is I want to make sure that you operate in knowledge and understanding what's happening. So number one, the origin of Halloween is paganistic. Number two, Halloween is significant for those that are involved in witchcraft. Three, Halloween has not been redeemed for God. Like I've said to you, we have redeemed the Good Friday. We have redeemed the Christmas. We have redeemed the Sunday. So we know that the, what we celebrate as Christian holidays, even though their origin was based in the paganistic or the idolistic holidays, but we've managed to redeem that. But Halloween has not been able to be redeemed. So you need to understand what we are celebrating. And when you buy the costumes for your children and whatever else that you do, and you say it's just about candy, I want you to understand as your pastor that it is not just another holiday celebrating 
the Halloween, it is conforming to the culture. And, that, and it's important for you to understand that you find out that a lot of innocent and, uh, uh, parents that well-meaning, they will just go around with what their kids are crying for because everybody else is doing it. They're celebrating it in schools. They're celebrating it everywhere. And therefore, it becomes a very popular culture. But how many of you know, understand the Bible says we are not called to conform with the culture. We are called, uh, we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Somebody shout amen. Remember 11, 16 of the book of Romans, it says this, for if the first fruit is holy, then the Bible says the lamp also is holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So we need to understand, therefore, that uh, you and I, as we see where it is coming from and where the culture is coming from, you realize that uh, uh, there are things that we can learn from there. Number five, when we celebrate Halloween, Halloween promotes the values that are contrary to Christianity. And I've said this to you. We celebrate the cross that is empty. They celebrate the skulls. You understand that, therefore, it is important. The Bible says, abstain from anything that is a form of evil. We celebrate the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, but they celebrate the death and the spirit of the dead. So it's important that you understand. If you go on Facebook right now on the events page, you'll find out that there are already invitations that are there where you see hundreds and hundreds of people in Perth that are going to celebrate this holiday. And in that the founders of these events, they are, not, they, are, they are not shy to tell you there will be a lot of bloodshed. They are saying that. And it's not only going to be the bloodshed of animals and cats, as you know. There is a lot of killing of babies that takes place in these holidays. Behind that, there is always something hidden because the enemy is the author of confusion. And he wants you to walk in that darkness. Am I talking to somebody? So Halloween promotes those values that are contrary to Christianity. For you, for you and I, our values, the Bible says you are the light of the world. Those are values. Our values are you and I have been redeemed from the works of darkness. And therefore, it is important that we understand what God wants to build in our lives, even as we serve him. Number six, when you and I are finding ourselves trapped by Halloween, we are having fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness. And the Bible tells us already that in, uh, uh, in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 5, that have nothing to do with the works of darkness. So it's important that you understand that is why it's a holiday that is celebrated chiefly at night time up to midnight. It is because these are the works of darkness in which they do that. But also number seven, the activities that people engage in, they dishonor our Lord God Almighty. Do you know that it is said most of the accidents that do take place around this time, if this actually was found, this was approved. James Allen, uh, Allen Fox, who is the professor in one of the top universities in America, and it said that they realized that between this period of time in October and the 1st of November, you find out that the highest rate of crime, or should I say the crime rates are the highest during this period of time. Because the devil, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And it's important that you and I understand what the enemy is trying to do. 175 million, this is now comes on the states, 175 million Americans alone are involved in Halloween, and that includes Christians and Christian churches. Activities that people engage in, they do dishonor God. It is a bloody holiday. There is a lot that takes place in these activities and festivities. Actually, one of my spiritual daughters who is here in this church was involved in these satanic rituals, got involved and covenanted herself and was married to Lucifer. There is a lot. It's actually satanism covered it's important that you as God's people understand. And, uh, and I'm saying this because when we partake of the emblems of communion, you do need to understand that what covers us, it is not the blood of animals. What covers us is not the blood of humans. It is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you and I are partaking of communion, it is again to remind you. The Bible says, do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. But oftentimes Christians, they partake of the emblems and these symbols, and they don't understand the imperative and the importance and the significant, how critical it is. Every child of God, when you partake of those emblems, it is not just juice. It is not just that wafer. I want you to get that, that significantly. Life is spiritual before it is physical. So whenever we partake of these emblems, 
problems, we are agreeing with what God has done in our lives. That the death of Jesus Christ and the shed, shedding of the blood by the Lord Jesus brought us a redemption in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen.